Good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> oh, well, you know, um, I'm Christy with Love Yoga to Go. Um, I am here with a Christian meditation and devotional focused on Advent this month on Fridays. And um, this week, we focus on the prophecy of hope. So I invite you to find your comfortable place, your easy seat, rooting down through your sitting bones, wherever you're sitting, rising up nice and tall through the spine, up to the crown of the head. And just tune your attention inward. Inward to your breath. the God-given breath of life. You know, we don't breathe on our own. God breathes us. Our breath is the sustainer of life. This is the most wonderful time of the year, but it's not because of presents or gifts or um, the coming new year or anything like that. Um, it is the most wonderful time of year because it's the time of year that we hopefully pause and stop to remember the babe that was born in a manger that grew up, lived a perfectly sinless life, and was crucified, died, and was buried because of our sin. He was raised from the dead on the third day and is seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father right now. So that is why this season is the most wonderful time of the year because of Jesus Christ. Not because he was born on December 25th, but again, um, we don't know exactly when he was born, but because of the time of, because this is the time of year that we celebrate him. So I invite you to lower your gaze or close your eyes and just listen as I read through some thoughts. I've taken some different thoughts from several different places and, um, I'll just be reading through some thoughts and some scripture, and I just invite you to focus in on it. So, so the first week of Advent is the prophecy candle, or the prophets, the prophecy, um, the focus of hope, both of those together. And um, we're going to go back to Israel. So Israel, the people of Israel experienced two very serious disappointments in their history. These disappointments led them to hope and believe that God would send his Messiah, the chosen one to make things right. After the time of David and Solomon, very few kings in Israel, and I would even question Solomon, <laughs> um, very few kings of Israel measured up to God's ideal. In fact, many of them um, in the scripture say, and they did evil in the sight of the Lord after each of their you know, little sections about them. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. They worshiped idols. They did evil. That was what a lot of those kings did. Um, very few. But there were many prophets that saw in this failure the need for a divine kingship. And through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, these prophets proclaimed that King Jesus, that the Messiah, would be sent directly from God and would soon appear. 
So I'm going to go to Isaiah 9 now. I'm sorry, I didn't have that marked. Um, And I'm going to be reading from Isaiah 9, um, about verse 1 through 7. So, <clears throat> but there will be gloom, there will be no gloom for her who is in ang anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea and the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. Verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has shone, has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they were glad when they divide the spoil, for the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor. You have broken as on the day of Midian, for every boot of the tramping warrior warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And that's the foretelling, and we know what the foretelling was. We know the biblical account of Jesus um, in each of the Gospels. And so we can trust that that happened and know that he does reign on this earth and that he is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. After being taken into captivity and separated from their homeland, the people of Israel felt their hope slipping, even from enemy soil. However, God's prophets continued to proclaim his plan for the future, this plan for the child that was going to be born. The bold and courageous words of Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel kept the embers of hope alive in the despairing exiles. They were given hope, but they were told to wait. God's time was not their time. And I would say even now, God's time is not our time. And so they waited and longed for Messiah, their special king, to appear. And then I want to move into um, just a little section about Elizabeth and Zechariah, because this John the Baptist was a foretelling of Jesus Christ. He was also a, uh, a form of the prophecy about Jesus. So, um, I'm just going to read through this. I'm not going to read the scripture that goes with it, but all at once, an angel from the Lord appeared to Zechariah beside the altar. Zechariah was a priest, and he had gone into the um, holy place to offer, um, to make his offering. So, all at once, an angel from the Lord appeared to Zechariah beside the altar. Zechariah was confused and afraid, but the angel told him, do not be afraid. God has heard your prayers. Your wife, Elizabeth, who had been barren, if you'll remember, will have a son, and you must name him John. Your son will be a great servant of the Lord. He must never drink wine or beer, and the power of the Holy Spirit will be with him from the time he is born. He will make ready for the coming of the Lord 
So he was a prophet. John, John, Zechariah, and Elizabeth's son was given to John, uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah as a prophet to, to declare that Jesus was coming. Zechariah was so surprised that he didn't believe a word that the angel said. He doubted. Because of that, the angel made Zechariah mute until the birth of his son. Then when Elizabeth's son was born, they named the child John. And Zechariah, that was actually the first words that he spoke, was his name. Just as the angel had said, Zechariah began speaking and praising God. Everyone who heard about this wondered what the child would be, would grow up to be. They knew that the Lord was with him. You know, sometimes we have prayers that we don't feel are being answered, or we feel like we've been serving God, but we are not very special, you know, um, servants, or, you know, we, nothing special has happened. God hasn't used us for any, quote, big thing. But that's really not what it's about. It's really not about what big thing we do. It's about glorifying Jesus Christ. So um, I would invite you to not give up, to not give up that hope um, that, to, that you can trust in him, that you can trust in that hope, that you can trust in that hope. And we can wait for the Lord. Our whole being can wait for him. And in his word, we can put our hope. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up. One who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that is our ultimate hope. The resurrection from the dead. We anxiously await his return. I know, you know, right now, um, there's just a lot of turmoil going on, um, you know, in, in our country, in our world. Everything seems to be upside down. But I can assure you, God has not forgotten us. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten me. He has already won the battle. He's already won the war. As believers, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are sealed with his blood and nothing can thwart us from that ultimate eternal life. When we are his, that cannot be taken away from us. That's our ultimate hope. That's our future world hope. Our hope on this earth looks to that hope for eternity. And we can rest and we can know that hope because of the babe, because of Mary, because of Zachariah and Elizabeth and baby John that grew up to foretell of Jesus' coming in the hope of that little baby, that little baby in the manger that grew up in perfection, that grew up spotless, that never disobeyed that always kept his eyes on eternity, 
took our sin. And I'll tell you, if you don't think you're a sinner, you're wrong. Because we have all sinned and fallen short. He took that sin on himself. And given us the hope of eternal life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hope. Thank you for the mercy that you bestow on us sinners. That we can soar, that we can stand strong in the midst of adversity. In whatever persecution may come, that we know our footing is solid and on solid ground. You Lord Jesus, are the solid rock, and we stand on you. I pray, Father, that you will give us an unwavering faith, that no matter what comes our way, we can stand strong in you, that you will renew our strength, that we will soar like the winged eagles, that we will run and not grow weary. May you, God, our Abba Father, the God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace as we trust you so that we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us as your children. Praise be to your name, Lord Jesus, the governments rest on your shoulders. Help us not to forget that. Oh, Lord, help us not to forget that you have already conquered sin and death in this world. That we can trust and have hope. Lord, take us home when it's your time. when our last breath has breathed. Until then, gird us up with your strength and your hope by the power of the Holy Spirit in your holy and precious name. Amen. Feel free to go ahead and flutter your eyes open. Just a little batting of the eyes, opening up. Thank you for joining me. I'll be here next Friday at 1 o'clock for week two of Advent. I'll be here on Tuesday at 10 o'clock for our normal This World is Not Our Home Christian Meditation and Devotional. And I'm also on Zoom. Um, if you are interested, go ahead and shoot me a private message and we'll see what we need to do to uh, get you in that, in that uh, class. That's a Friday morning class at 9.30 right now. I'm also considering a Friday evening, or not a Friday evening class, but an evening class, probably on Thursday. And one more thing is um, a healing retreat for grief, trauma, um, just a time, even if you don't have any of those things, it's going to be a time of renewal and refreshment and um, just a turning in of Jesus Christ, turning into Jesus. That I'm looking at that at the end of January. That'll be on Zoom as well. So anyway, that's what we have going. God bless you. Um, I bless, pray blessings over your weekend. And I will see you back here on Tuesday. Bye.